Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench and another video for you now and today we're going to be looking at doing some painting with an airbrush Ooh, and some paints Ooh, and some thinners and stuff and some other little bits and pieces i got and what we're looking at is getting a more interesting finish on a jet fighter um, and this is just, I've got these new tools and this is just something I thought I could use them on um, I think if you use your imagination and stuff the what you can use these tools for are going to be endless but basically this is something that this is a book I've had for a few years now Danny Corman if you ever see one of these books Danny Corman's Uncovering The yeah buy them because they they go out of print they're from Deco Publications they go out of print and uh, this is the F14 one and um, they generally get very expensive and sometimes don't come back so basically what we're looking at is getting this rather than just having this sort of you know this nice basic sort of grey finish to our models give them a bit of interest we all know about pre-shading and using salt techniques and post shading and all that but when you actually look at this when you look, look close up at this you can see on the back of this f14 it's just an absolute utter mess you know look at all the streaking you can see all the panel lines it's one of the first times i've actually seen that you know pre-shading almost looks a bit authentic you know picking up your panel lines um you got this one down here, um, you know, same sort of thing. You got all that black and grey, and a million different shades of whites and greys in there. All that staining, and then when you go over the page here, we can also see here this one. Um, what they tend to do is when the panels are removed for inspection or whatever, and the paint gets chipped, they will tend to touch them in with like a little spray gun. So you can also get that sort of effect there, which is, you know, if you look back here, that would be a post shape post effect with oils and stuff but this here this one this this area here you could do all this with paint so that's what I'm going to look at doing is how to sort of get that effect and I've done a little bit of work um, and just this literally took about 10 minutes and that's that's an initial sort of test as to how to get that sort of blotchy look and ignore the edges you know I haven't tried to do this perfect sort of look at this area in here really you know sort of come half an inch in from the edges and that's the sort of look I'm trying to get now obviously this is bare plastic it's had no pre-shading um, and it is my first ever attempt to at doing this what I'm doing now this will be my second attempt and you're going to see it live on camera um, basically it's getting this sort of mottled finish so it looks more interesting than just having it matte grey so these are the tools I've used. I got them from these guys over at Premium Hobbies. We've got Trinity Splatter and Trinity Splatter 2. They're made by a company called Ushi van der Osten. And this one is part number 4014. And this one is 4021. Now I haven't tried this one. But when you actually look at them, if we look at the, the first set, we've got three... Come on out. We've got three sheets of PE. A, B and C. Okay, so this one's A, and this has got the really fine holes in it, you can see. And then B has got some much bigger blotches. Now, I think that would be probably better for your military stuff. Your, um, AFEs, I mean, not military. Um, your tanks and trucks and stuff. And then this one here, C, is kind of in the middle. Again, it's sort of big, open blotches, and I don't think... That is going to work for an aircraft effect that we're looking for. If you know different, please tell me in the comments if you've used these. I would love to know typical applications for all this stuff because it's it's very interesting. Um, and then we've got this one here. This is the, the Trinity Splatter 2 set. And I haven't used any of these. Come out. Come out wherever you are. Okay, so this is your A, B and C in here again. And you can see this is very similar to the others, but you've got sort of really fine up here. You've got the big, bigger holes down here, a massive blank area there. And then this one here is like lines. That would probably be good for if you're trying to imitate, um, you know, cracked paint. You know, where you sometimes see paint all cracking and peeling where it's been in the sun. It's lifting away from the paint that's underneath. Um, so you may do a rust effect and then paint, you know... Um, paint your model and then do a rust effect through this or something um, so that would be quite interesting and then this one here again it's just a different sort of 
splatter finish. So as I say, if you've used these, um, let me know what you think and uh, what you use them on and what sort of effect you were after and how successful you were. So um, as I say, this is what I've done already. So I'll show you now how I achieve this. And that is done with basically three colours of paint. Now, as I say, there's no pre-shading on this. So I think on this, we'll do this side. It's just straight on plastic. There's no primers, no nothing on it. You can see there's a bit of a sheen to it. It is stripped. You can see this is this is my Hanker 111 wing that I use for everything. Remember this, this was covered in stencils and all sorts. Um, but basically, I think on this side, we'll do some pre-shading um, and some post-shading as well. And we'll also play with one other colour, which is the darker grey here, which I haven't used on that side. So, basically, I'm using MRP Fine Surface Primer Black, any black, LP4 Matte White, any matte white, and then XF19 Light Grey, any light grey. That's all I'm doing. So what I'm doing is starting with this base plastic. Now, I'm not wearing a mask, but I do have a fan on to my left and the window open to my right, so any fumes or whatever are going to get blown across the across the room so I'm going to put some of this MRP black into my airbrush like so okay and I don't have much in there in fact it's probably not enough there we go That in there, just put the lid back on here a minute. Right. So, what I'm going to do is come along with this, take away the, there's a plastic film on there, so I'm going to remove the plastic film. And I have used this, and I'm going to show you at the end of this video also how to clean it. So, what do you do for that? So I'm going to get some masking tape, just to help hold it in position. That's all this is for. Okay, when I did it before, I put masking tape all around the edge and it, I made it very difficult to move. So, because I have no nails, this is also still very difficult to move. Right, so pick that up. I'm going to detack the masking tape a bit, make it less sticky. Right, and I'm going to hold this down on here. Okay, let the masking tape do its work. And then with the airbrush, check the flow. I'm just going to very lightly colour in the area. And I'm just remember this MRP black is very, very thin, so it will take a lot to cover. That's why I've used it because it gives you more control rather than just hitting it with black. Okay, so there we go. Now obviously I don't need to take as much care on here as you might do on your model but obviously you want to stay away from the edges because otherwise you'll end up with a, a nice hard line. Okay so that's that first bit done. Peel that away you can see we've got this spattery effect and you can see where it's been touching the plastic you get a harder edge than where it's not. You can see around here this hard edge, we don't want that, that's what we want to try and avoid. So, um, putting the masking tape all around probably is a good idea. So what I'm going to do here is, go over here, and pull it down on the front, and do the forward bit. Like I say, we're not after perfection, all we want is a random spattery effect. Now I'm going to grab a touch of thinners, just remove that black line because I think that's going to ruin the effect. I'm just going to remove this, there we go, because I think that will ruin the effect to be honest. Just get rid of that. thinners then we can grab this back out again and what I'm going to do now is stay away from the edges so 
I've just sort of got to concentrate around the middle. As you can see, I'm spraying very lightly, not sticking around in any one area. You don't want to get it wet because if you do, it, the paint will capillary under and you'll end up with a big black blob or a big blob of whatever colour paint you're using. Again, come around here, spray it through there, hold it down, and spray it through there. Now obviously I'm kind of rushing this to make this a bit more interesting to watch. But um, you, know, you would do this at home and you would play with this and practice and practice and practice and you'll get absolutely perfect at it. And obviously try different colours. I'm just trying to show you an effect using just these three colours. So there we go. So then we've got that sort of blotchiness to it there. Okay. So that's just with the black. Now what I'm going to do, because I didn't try this on the other side, I'm going to do a, a, um, a pre-shading, is the word I was looking for. But I'm only going to do half of it, so I'll come along there, just like so. In there. And there. And then across there. Let's see how that looks. Again, so you just got one bit of pre shading on there. So that's it for the black. We can pour that back in there. Wipe off the side of the airbrush. Okay, put that back on there, and then I'm just going to blow the airbrush out. Okay, so drop a thinners. Drop a thinners in there. Spill that around. Notice I'm leaving the camera on so you get it in real time. I'm going to wipe the lid back on the thinners. So you can see now I haven't even bothered cleaning the airbrush yet. You can see it's still got remnants of black in there. The MRP black. So I can put a drop of thinners in there. I want this paint pretty heavily thinned. So I'm going to come along with some XF19. You can see there we've got the dirty thinners. In there like that. So that's probably about 70% well, thinners, maybe even 80%. It's a very thin paint so now we can just go over this With a light grey, and just knock back. Black a bit just to sort of blend it out. And I'm out of paint already. That's, what, that's the sort of effect I want. I just black it, just get a bit of a darker area in between the black. Now we can come along with some white. <clears throat> Again, get some dinners. Again, heavily thin the paint. Wrong cap. Put that in there, that's about 60% thinners. And with LP paints, you don't want to thin them as much as you would with XF. They seem to be, they're very strange. They seem to be thin, thin, gone. It seems you, you go from being just a bit too thick for your airbrush to like dirty thinners in 10 seconds it's it's, it's crazy so there we go so that's that done again as I say very thin 
So what I'm going to do now is using this same mask, I'm going to spray white which will give us now the negative of what we already had. Take that away, put that on there. So you can see the white is working on top of the black and it hardly notices on top of the light grey. Okay, a bit more over here. As you can see this is totally and utterly random. It's, that's what's nice about it. There's no science to it. There's no art, artistic talent really. It's just a case of checking it on and spraying through it. And you can see now we've got this kind of mottled effect with the white and the grey showing through. The other thing I want to do now is pre-shade here with white. You can notice I'm not stopping the airbrushes because I don't want any spatter. Right, there we go. Another thing we can do is come on the middle of a panel and just lighten. Just do these two at the end here. We can lighten the centre of the panel. Okay, do the same here. Lighten that one. Right, and there we go. So I'll get cleaned up and I'll get some more grey in the airbrush. I said I was going to not stop, didn't I? Okay, so that's the LP out of the airbrush. We'll just blow that through. It's great, this little fan actually. It blows the paint. The I can see the paint directly out the window. Um, right, so we've got our XF19 again, light grey. Some thinners. Again, not going to clean the airbrush out. You can see the airbrush has still got white in it. Let's get that out of the way because I normally drip thinners. Get that nicely thinned. And then put some of the grey in there. That's about 60% thinner, probably. As you can see, I don't ever measure my paints. I'm not a drop counter. I really don't worry about that. Am I mixing the airbrush, which a lot of people don't like? There we go. Just blow that out. Test spray. And then we can come along here and go over the wing again. I light like grey. Remember this is XF19. Staying about five inches away from the surface. And now you can see straight away you're starting to see that effect of the white and the grey coming through. Yeah, if you see the white, you can see the white, you can see the grey, you can see the black, you can see it all there. You can see this pre-shading. Now if you want to get this pre-shading a bit less obvious, just go over it all again. Or even go over the pre-shading. If you want a panel which is particularly light in colour, you can come along with your grey and just paint that panel in on a lighter colour still have the blotchiness showing through as you can see there and as you can see it's just an, an in, a way of getting a more interesting look without 
spending hours and hours and hours with salt and some everything else. I mean, obviously, this is then a base, and you can then come along and do your oils and stuff, and your weathering techniques on top of it. I also think it would be very good for canvas for like World War One aircraft and stuff. There's something I do want to try now, which I haven't tried before. Is this is dry yet? <clears throat> I'm going to use some XF54, which is a darker grey. <clears throat> and anyway, thinners in there. And then just get a couple of brushfuls in there. There we are. And the other thing, do you see me pouring the paint back in the pots? I don't bother. I wouldn't do it with real colours if there's colour mixing or whatever. But these, they're Tamiya colours, they're generic colours, they're not accurate or you know FS numbers or anything like that, so I don't really worry about it too much. Um so I think what we'll do is do an area down here. Did I blow this back through? Yeah. Something I always do, guys. Finger over the nozzle. Just blow back through just a couple of bubbles. When you put the thinners in, the thinners goes down around the needle. When you put the paint in, the paint doesn't mix with it. If you have to just do that, it blows the thinners back up and then you get a mix. That's why I do it. Okay, so very lightly with this dark grey and see the kind of effect we get. A darker grey. Okay, so we can see there we now have a completely different look to it. It almost looks like it's kind of water stained. And as the paint dries back, it's becoming a lot more subtle. And as you can see, that is, if we do the same on this side, the other thing you can do, I'm guessing, is, let's give this a go. Let's, let's mask a panel. Just roughly. And then we can put this over. Like that. And then spray through here. remove the masking tape and as you can see we've got one panel now with a different effect. The other thing is perhaps we could try with this thin mix. We'll do it over here. Go with this darker grey and see what sort of effect we get. Can we still see the white and everything coming through? Makes it a lot more subtle. You can see here the difference between there and there. Hardly see, you can hardly see the model on here at all. It's coming through as the paint dries. As the paint dries, because it's got so much thinners, it will attack what's underneath and bring it back through. So um, let's just try it down here, slightly lighter. There we go. That's a very, very, very light coat. You can see on there you've still got the effect coming through but it is slightly darker. Okay. So there we are. So I'm not sure that I'm not over the moon with this darker grey to be honest. I think it looks a little bit heavy. But I think on the odd panel it might look quite interesting. So um, there we go. I think what I might try now is try doing a bit of streaking on it. Right so what I've got here is one of these MIG ammo 
streaking brushers. This is winter grime. It's like a sort of greeny grey colour. And I know this isn't how you're supposed to do it at all, but it seems to have come out. I don't think I've shaken it enough because it's come out very, very thin. And I should I think it should be more like um, like an enamel paint and then you allow it to dry a bit and then streak it. But what I found is if I use a cotton bud, I can just pull it back. So I get the get the sort of desired effect on it. Like I said, I wouldn't do this on my model, but on this test wing, it's absolutely fine. There we are. And then if we want to get rid of the little bit on the front there, we can grab some odorless thinners. And a nice little brush. Check the brush is clean. And then just brush over that and it will remove any of the streaking grime forward of that panel line. So we can get that kind of effect. And then the other thing we can do of course is come along with a do -do 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 -do. Industrial Dirt, this is the uh, Modeler's World Industrial Dirt Wash, just put some of that in there, and grab a drop of that, and place it into the panel lines, and let it chase around, so you can see straight away you're starting to get this Starting to get broken up now. Just put the wash into there. It doesn't matter if it pulls because we can remove it after. These panel lines are very, very fine. So that's one of the problems. If you've got very fine panel lines, the, the washes won't necessarily chase down them so readily. So you can actually just brush in the whole panel line if you want to. there we go. And then what we can do with that is rub it away or we can come in once again with our odorless thinner and just brush where we want that panel liner to disappear from and it will disappear if you've put a sealing coat on it first. There we go, we can rub it away like that. So you just soften it, streak over it. And there we go. There we go, I've got to play with that for a couple of minutes and um as you can see, as I talk about all the time with um, with your washes and when you're using oils and stuff, and especially with your floral washes and that, if you don't give the surface a pre or coat of a, a semi-gloss varnish or something, everything you put on it bites into the matte paint because the surface is almost like porous. Hence, you can see all the staining around that panel line there. Now, if you want that kind of effect, then don't put a clear on there because you won't get that effect if you do use a clear. So it's kind of, you need to know what you want before you start. But if you just want to do your panel lines, do some streaking, I would suggest sealing it in. Otherwise you do get this um, discoloration. The other thing I want to try, which I haven't yet tried, I've got a 2,500 grit Infini sponge here. I'm just going to see what happens if I rub over the surface, what kind of effect we get. 
because it will remove parts of the areas. But you can see here it's removed the grey spattering from there, but not here. So you get this kind of uneven look to it now. You see it there. So I think the sky is the limit, and of course you've got all these different patterns as well. I mean that's that's the only one I've used. You can imagine if I'd have used one of these others, then it would look completely different. But um, I also done done some on here with the oils just to show you how much it sort of goes in. And if you use a flory wash, as you know, you just brush that on and then rub it off, and um, it really will dig in. So um, you need to be mindful of that fact and and seal it in. But the other thing you can do, of course, is sand it afterwards. And that should help to remove some of that surface staining. There we go. So now we've got on there a very, very subtle effect. You can hardly see it. It's really good. It shows up better to the naked eye than it does on camera. But it's a very, very subtle sort of look to it. But... I think you'd agree, you know, it's not it's not great by any stretch of the imagination. You can see on here where we had the where we had the white pre-shading. I mean that's come out pretty good. And you've got the the, the, the pre-shaded panels in there. Uh, this was the black pre-shading around here, which has practically disappeared. That that'd be my fault. So um yeah, so uh, I just thought I'd use them and give you an idea of what you can achieve. So, you know, it's very difficult to pick up on camera, but I think that there is my preferred finish. That is just the plastic with black, then the light grey, then the white, and then the light grey over the top. And that, I think, is my favourite, because it's very, very subtle, and it just looks a lot more realistic. Perhaps a little less light grey to make it a little bit darker. Um... Or maybe a bit more black to make it come through the grey. But uh, anyway, like I say, it's something you can play with. And uh, this is my first time. It's the first time I've even opened the packets this morning. So there we go. That has been a review of the Trinity Splatter. And I've only used A. In a minute I'm going to show you how to clean it. And then this is Trinity Splatter 2. So we can have a little play with those another time. So um, cleaning it. Basically, if you get a cigar tin, like so, and you put it in the, in the bottom of the cigar tin, and then I've got some tool cleaner here, which is basically dirty. Pull that in there. And then, brush over the front of the tool to remove the paint. The reason I'm doing this is because if you wipe it with a rag or a paper towel, I think it's going to get full of fluff, hairs, it's going to pick up these sharp edges and pull them out, so then when you pull on your model it's going to scratch it. So I think this is probably the best way to clean this tool. Okay, so I'm going to grab my paper towel here, grab a pair of tweezers, Lift it up, brush it down, because remember it doesn't need to be spotless, it just needs to have the, the paint removed, otherwise if you just keep using it it's just going to clog up. And then I'm going to put that on there, shut that lid so it doesn't stink, and then just, so I'm not rubbing it, I'm just pushing the towel down onto it. Now you can see it's clean again. And we haven't picked up any edges, we haven't left any fluff in there. And if you want to, if you're really fussy, you can stick the plastic sheets back on it if you don't drop on the floor. So there we go. So as I say, that has been a review of those and I've thoroughly enjoyed using them. I no doubt you would do a lot better than me, but obviously this is like a first timer on camera. Um, I'm glad I showed you how the what happens with the oils if you don't um, pre uh, pre coat it. There we are. 
that's as I say that's my favorite there that area there anyway thanks for watching guys I'll see you all soon for another one bye for now